to Dance Geek. Uh, I hope you enjoyed last week's video about artistry in dance and artistry workshops that Dance Geek will be offering. Um, if you haven't watched that video, click the, I don't know where it is, but up in the corner, little info card, go and click that one. Um, today's video doesn't really directly relate to that video, but the artistry workshops is something that I'm really, really proud of with Dance Geek and I've been developing them for a very long time. Um, what I'm covering today does come under the banner of artistry. So it's not about a technique to do with physical dancing. Uh, today is about a very common problem that I found as a studio owner and as a dance teacher, but mainly as a studio owner, is putting makeup on kids. Let's, let's just get it out there. It's weird to put makeup on kids. It's at times very morally problematic ethically problematic um, but just in a pure practical sense it's hard kids don't want things poking on their faces they don't want to sit still um, it's difficult so I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks on what I've found works in my very long history of trying to get makeup onto children but I'm going to burp first apparently I'm not going to go into the ethics and the reasons why kids need to wear makeup when they're on stage. They just do. Um, if you want to discuss that with me, by all means, please have a polite, respectful conversation in the comments section. I think it's a really important conversation to have, but this video is not about that. This is about, well, how do you do it? How do you get the makeup on the kid? So. Some tips and tricks. Get them involved as much as you possibly can, okay? No matter how young they are, get them involved. Uh, so things like take them with you when you go to buy the makeup. Let them have their own kit. And you don't need to go somewhere. Makeup is so good now. You don't need to go to Sephora or Mecca or the David Jones counters and spend a heap of money on makeup. Go to Priceline or if you're in the States, go to Ulta. Go to the... Um, you know, the, the pharmacy, you can get some really, really good drugstore chemist brand type, chemist level um, makeup. One of the things that I found really good was to get them to pick the accessories because you can't necessarily say, oh, which foundation do you want? It, they have to have the foundation that matches their skin that's the right shade for them. But they can get them a case. A pencil case will do. I've got this pencil case that a friend bought me, um, it's day magical. Um, I use it as a, pencil cases and makeup cases are the same thing. Okay, so get, buy, let them get a pencil case that they really like. You can go to Kmart and get them really cheap. Um, my son, Indiana, when um, he's not dancing at the moment, when he was dancing and performing, uh, he didn't wear makeup for the first couple of, perform couple of years of performances because he was very young. A lot of his performances were the teacher didn't require them to, but as he got a bit older, uh, I think he was about six when he first wore makeup on stage, and I involved him a lot in it. But sometimes if you just give the child an option of this one or this one, then both would be, and you know both are going to be good, you're not giving them free reign, um, you know, both of these would work, you pick which one. It gives them ownership over it, they feel involved, they're less scared of it. Another thing I thought would be really cool, um, now this is not complete at the moment, but because it's you know, some of them are being used, but my best friend bought me this amazing pink hollow, it's actual hollow, because the colour shifts, with, guess you guessed it, rainbow unicorn brushes and uh, you can get so many different types of fun brushes that are not expensive this particular kit was a little bit pricey um she bought it online for me um but you can buy them very cheap online and you don't need a whole bunch of really good brushes you just need one or two good tools that you might spend a little bit of money on and then these are just a fun thing ding, 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 ding. Okay, um, but I'm lucky these particular unicorn brushes are very good. And the next part of getting them involved is let them do some of it. You'll be surprised how much they can actually do a pretty good job of it. Uh, and if they are too young to act or just not good at makeup at all, like they just don't get the idea, like they go lipstick over there, then give them a clean brush, pretend it's got product on it, 
And while you're doing blush, for example, on one side, they can do blush on the other. Second tip, practice. Take some time and practice with your kid. Now, you don't need to practice the exact makeup you're going to do on stage. The important thing is for you to practice brush strokes, applying makeup to somebody else, because a lot of parents have not put makeup on other people very much. They're just doing it on themselves. And it's a very different feeling putting it on another face. Um, so it's important that you practice, and it's also important your child practices having makeup put on them. I'm not sure why I'm still holding the sponge, but, you know. Uh, so you could practice face painting with your makeup, okay? So just get some different coloured eyeshadows and things and paint funny things on them. Paint a flower or, a, you know, paint, get red lipstick and make them into Iron Man, whatever. Um, just practice. Just have fun with it. Make the makeup part of it not a chore and not scary. Make it fun for both of you. It doesn't have to be detailed. Remember the 40-foot rule with theatre, Okay. Take a step back from their face. Don't be, if you're like, oh, that bit's not right. No one's going to see it. Put it this way. Anybody who can see an extra, like, slight dot here of eyeliner that you might not, that might have, you know, if they're that close to your child, they're either another kid in the class with them who doesn't care or they're a creeper. Get rid of them. Okay. They're not going to be that, no one, the audience is not that close to your kid. All right, so forget the details. Forget the YouTube makeup tutorials with beautiful blending and shading. You won't see it. Calm down, Beyonce, as Bianca Del Rio would say. Don't worry about that. 40-foot rule, they're on stage. Get the makeup on. You'll be okay. And my last overall tip before I get into some actual techniques, don't try to get your kid to sit completely still the whole way through. Accept the fact that your child is going to move or the kid that you're doing, this, whoever's makeup you're doing, they're going to move. They're going to move. And funnily enough, adults do it as well, constantly move. My sister is a makeup artist, works in television, and she constantly has clients who, like celebrity clients, who are talking and chatting and on the phone and doing all of this, and they, they just have to do their makeup around them, okay? No one sits there and just like a statue the whole time, except that your kid is going to move. There will be parts of it where you can say, all right, I need you to hold really still for me in this bit, see if you can be as still as a statue. But if you're doing that for the entire time, no, please be realistic, not gonna happen. Okay, so as you can see, this is not me. That is not me sitting on the chair. This is Charlie. Charlie, wave to the camera, wave. Wave. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie and Kiara. Now I am here. Hello. Um, Charlie's two. We're not going to do full face of makeup on a two-year-old, especially because Charlie, show your band aid. Look, band aid. Charlie fell over. Charlie fell over and face planted on the concrete, and he keeps picking at the scab that he's got. So we put a Batman band aid on it because it's cool. Um, so we're not going to do a full face on him. What we are going to do is just show you some of those. Um, tips that I gave before in action okay um, one of the ones I didn't talk about because you need like all parents know this but <laughs> distraction okay um, Charlie loves Paw Patrol what are you watching Charlie what is it pups pup pup he's watching pups okay the other thing is having someone else hold them so Kiara, he's familiar with her. She's holding him, so it, she's not like strapping him down. He's not getting an injection, but it's the same kind of theory that have someone hold them, keep them calm. Um, yeah, so he's going to watch Pups, which means, no, I don't have his face looking directly at me the whole time, but that's okay. I'll be all right. Now, I want to show Mama. you the difference oh, way to go. in using a brush for foundation on a child or brush for anything really and using the sponge and I really do believe the sponge is a better option so I'm using a mousse foundation Foundations. this is the one that Indy chose oh, I'm holding makeup it. Okay. influencer essence essence is a great brand if you're on a budget if money is an issue go with essence and they're really good so this is their mousse foundation um, you want to make sure that their skin is nice and soft to start with, okay? Um, and then the foundation 
as long as it's not too thick, will smooth quite well on it. You don't have to do full primer. Moisturizer will do for a child. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Mummy's turn. Mummy's turn. No, please. Charlie, you hold pups. Hold pups. Oh, where's pups? You want to do it? No. No. Please? No. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, where's pups? What are the pups doing? Tickle, tickle. Now, the mousse foundation, don't worry if he starts grabbing at it or whatever. The mousse foundation, what are the pups doing? Oh, nice. What's that? The mousse foundation can be a little bit crumbly on the skin and it does need to be blended a lot, which is why it's not always the best option for makeup for kids because you want something that's going to go on stuff. You want as quick as possible. So we're going to go in with a sponge this time. Same foundation, but with a sponge. I'm going to wet it with a setting spray. This is the setting spray from e.l.f. They're really good. And again, very reasonably priced. I'm going to bounce, 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 bounce into the product. Bounce, bounce, bounce. It's your favourite pup, Charlie. It's Rubble. Oh, who's that? Rubble? Rubble? Bouncy Rubble, bouncy Rubble. Has he got Rubble's digger? Rebel, do you want to do it? Now, I got no. more on this cheek in those two bounces, two bounces, one swirl, than I did on the other side. A lot of it is trial and error. Go back to the brush. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, no, no, no rubbing. Yeah, so they are going to rub. They'll be right. It'll be fine. They're not going to rub it off completely. If they rub it off completely, then the foundation that you've bought or the product that you've bought is not good. The only time rubbing it off completely straight away is going to be a big issue is when you're working with a black eye liquid eyeliner or black mascara. That's when things become difficult. Um, okay, Charlie, you say bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good bye -bye. boy. Changed again. I Yara. Have curly hair. Yay. Yay. So Charlie, <laughs> that's what Charlie says when he says hi. Yay. Yeah. Um, so Charlie is now sitting on the couch because, you know, he's two and I wouldn't normally put makeup on him. It's just a good example of what might happen. Um, Kiara is going to pretend to be a child. Won't be that hard for you? No. Um, she's going <laughs> to pretend to be a child and do silly things and um, make life difficult for me, which is what she does on a regular basis anyway. Um, and I'm going to put makeup on it. Okay, so big, big, big tip, do the eyes first. If you watch makeup YouTube channels and Have things like that, yet? yeah, okay. <laughs> if you watch YouTube videos of makeup, you'll see there's a lot of people who actually will do the, the eyes first. Traditionally, we did base first. Um, I highly recommend doing the eyes first when you're working with kids, even if you're just doing a simple eye look, because the idea behind doing the eyes first is that if you have shadows that have um, have fallout and get mess everywhere and whatever, you can clean it up. And I strongly, strongly support that when it comes to makeup on children for stage. Few things that I find work really well with kids, getting easy to apply products. So things like, oh, what happened, Charlie? Um, you Brows, please do their brows. Um, Kiara has amazing natural brows. Can you leave? Like they're, they're so good. They're so, like, just goals. A um, little bit unkept. The there's moment. every chance that you wouldn't need to do Kiara's brows and they'd still be okay on stage. Brows are the windows to the soul, not the eyes. The eyes are just balls of goop. Okay, the, eye, the eyebrows on stage are what gives the expression. So make sure we can see them. Um, this is a brow mascara. It's from Model Co. Now, I actually got this in a show bag at the Melbourne show. So it's like a sample size. And it's, the little wand on it is like a, it's a spoolie, so it's going to shape the brows into place, but it's also going to tint them. So you're not going to have to do two steps. You just do it all in one go. We're going to go for the areas of her brow where she is the most sparse and where we want to have them filled in. So she's quite sparse in here. Okay. You don't need to do the annoyed, annoying child bit just yet, dude. Okay. Come on. I know. Well done. <laughs> Head up. Um, you don't need to have them filled in too much in there. 
closer the brows are together, the angrier you look. So, yeah, we don't want angry kids. Um, but, you know, it might be that we're like, okay, we want to fill in here a bit more. And we want to darken the outside tail because the tail on stage is the first bit that disappears. Unless you're a blondie like me and everything disappears. What you're wanting to do is brush the brows upwards. Up, up, up. Now, if you can see on Kiara's eyes here, what she did there straight away, she did it deliberately, is kids follow the brushes a lot of the time. I found this with face painting. Older kids will follow where the brush is going. That's fine. Up, up, up. Don't be detailed. Just get the stuff on. Get it on. Boom. Move along. Yep. We're going to do the outside edge. And she's looking at it again. Okay. And that's okay. She's moving. That's okay. We go. We find it. Line up your brush. She's looking. She's looking. And then we go. Boom. If she moves, we go. Oh. Oops. Oh, well. Wait. Use your finger. Boom. Do what you can. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to show you a cleaning up method after. Okay. So we just. Boom. Fill them in. Boom, fill them in. Boom, boom. She's blinking. It's okay. Just know that she's going to blink. It's going to happen. Blink, blink. Brows done. Well done. Yay. So I'm not sure how, how strong it's coming out there, but there's one brow that's done. It's just more defined. It's her brow. I haven't drawn a whole other brow. Someone else's brow on there. It's her brow. I've just darkened what's there as opposed to this where you can't see her brow. Okay, so we're just enhancing their features. Mascara. Mascara, mascara, mascara. Um, the wand is really important. A wand like this, this is the, this is a great mascara. I really enjoy it. The L'Oreal False Lash Wings in waterproof. Highly recommend using waterproof for stage, even if you're an, an adult, um, because we sweat stuff happens but for kids really important because their eyes are probably going to water but this brush I used this on India and this brush I was like oh dude that's not a great idea is it because this brush is so spiky and it's very uncomfortable and the bristles are really small um, and it's trying to build length and all of this sort of stuff which is not massively necessary on stage. You just need thickness. So what I would recommend is a volumizing mascara because volumizing mascaras have thicker brushes like this. They're easier to apply. They're more comfortable to apply for the child. And if you have a look, the bristles, hopefully you can see that, the bristles are actually longer. So they're going to be more comfortable for the kid to have them on. Now this brush, this is Essence. This is the Essence Volume Curl and Hold Mascara. It's a great dupe for the um, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which is a great mascara, but it's expensive. And, you know, I don't know about you, but it might not be massively appropriate to have a kid running around with better than sex. So, volume, curl and hold. Oh, what's mommy. up? You want to sit with mummy? Well, that's not going to happen. Go with the curl of the brush and go with the chaos that's happening around you. If there's a child trying to put a tablet in your lap so that they can watch Paw Patrol, go with you, it. You've got your it's dancers, younger sibling yeah. with you a lot of the time. All right, don't so. get them to look up. That's ridiculous. They'll just see the brush, okay? Get them looking down. Don't worry about getting right in at the root. Don't, don't stress about that. Go on the outside of their eye first. Don't worry about going inside. Aim to get, divide your eye into thirds. Yeah, don't worry about the inside third. If you can get mascara on that bit, well done you. If you can't, oh well, you'll be right. We want to go out and open. Out and open is our aim for makeup on the eyes, especially on stage. So what we're going to do is get them to look pretty much directly ahead and then down a tiny bit. So follow my finger, that's it, down, stay there. Okay, and then what we do is, we just go, not gonna hurt. Mascara is definitely the one you wanna practice. Two ways, you can go, shake, 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 up, 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 just get the ends, don't worry about the bit close to their eye. She's blinking, that's fine. The blinking technique is actually really helpful. They're going to blink. It's instinctive to blink as something comes at your eye to protect your eyeball. So I'm going to do this eye here. And what I want you to do is look at me and then very slowly blink. And as she blinks, her lid, her lashes are going down. 
and I take the brush slightly up and boop, swipe. Yeah? Oh no! Okay. This is where having them watch something on a tablet or a phone or something can come in handy because they are already looking down. But if you can practice the, I don't know where your shows are. Oh, there. If you can get them to do the blink method, I think you get a better application and I think it's easier. I've always found much more success getting kids to do it that way. Um, don't, the jiggle does work if you've used the jiggle method to put mascara on, but it's a bit daunting for kids. This is also really good for just kids in general, people who don't wear mascara on the regular. Okay, so just look straight ahead and slowly blink. Again, slowly blink. So if they're just blinking away because their eyes are reacting to mascara, cool, fine, work with it. She's blinking, she's blinking, I'm going, I'm going, done. And now she has mascara on. Does she have a lot of mascara on? No. Does she need a lot of mascara on? Probably not. Face. Do as few products on the face as you possibly can. Okay? I think it would be better to invest in a really long staying good foundation that has great blendability so you want it to be really really blendable and you want it to stay because the worst thing is if you're going to have to keep putting foundation on a kid who doesn't want foundation on them okay um, and there are ones out there that are lightweight this from Essence is awesome I love it I have sensitive skin very sensitive skin I have rosacea I have um, the inability to talk without moving my hands. I have rosacea, I have psoriasis, and I have hyperhidrosis. This is one of the few foundations that actually works for me. Um, it doesn't feel like a second skin. You do feel it on the skin. It does have a bit of weight. You've used this, haven't you, the stay all day? It does have a bit of weight, but not a lot. Um, it's a liquid, so it's going to go on easier. And it stays. It's great. And it's like $6 or something. $6 Australian. I think if you're, yeah, if you're watching like this that. in the States, you can get it for like $3 or something. It's incredible. Mm. I loves it. Okay, so you want to make sure their face is nice and smooth. Put some moisturiser on them. Moisturiser is great because they can rub it in themselves. Get the foundation on as best you can. Don't put too much product on. And Mommy. if you've got a kid who, like Charlie before, kept moving, uh. so keep moving for me, just chase them with it. Chase, 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 chase. Okay? <laughs> chase, chase, chase. And sure. then, and then because, you know, reciprocal relationships, you, you, you put it on mummy. Ooh, nice. You're not going on stage. Well, if you are going on stage, get someone else, get them to put it on someone else. But let them have a, oh, she's a unicorn. Um, yeah, chase, 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 down, and then go back to hands, especially if you are their parent, because they're used to the gentle touch of mum, hopefully. <laughs> wow. Mattifying powder. Again, Essence. This is not sponsored by Essence. However, Essence, if you'd like to sponsor me, I'm up for it, because I love your products. Um, the mattifying powder is really cool because it can help to blend what's already on the face. Um, and it does actually mattify and it's really good for the touch-ups afterwards. Okay, so if they're a sweaty kid like me... I want to do it. You want to do it? I want to do it. Okay, you do it. Go. Okay, this mattifying powder may look dark, but it's really not. Okay, and she can just put that up. My turn. Mummy's turn now. Oh, tickle, tickle. Oh, tickle, tickle. I would also recommend getting a lighter powder that's an actual colour powder. Really? Really, Queen? It, Paw Patrol stopped. Oh. We need to wait for it to start again. It's well, you know what else is going about to stop is this. So, uh, It's just me again now. One little tip I want to share for the very end is the clean-up things. If you've done, like, made a major mistake and you're like, ah! Or your kids put, you know, texture on their face or something, okay, rather than just rubbing at it with a makeup wipe, I'm not a massive fan of makeup wipes from a skincare point of view, but makeup wipes and baby wipes are really great at getting things, getting removing stains and things in a pinch. So, you know, go for it. So get a, I'm using baby wipes, get a baby wipe and a cotton tip. These ones are from Aldi. It's the Le, Le Cura brand that they have. Um, and they have a lot of foundations and make, other makeup products. And what I have, I've used a few of their products. 
I don't mind it. They're not stuff that I'm like, oh, I must have this. But if you want to look for cheaper options for makeup for your kid, have a look at Lacura at Aldi. Okay, so you get your Q-tip. Um, the Q-tip forms a nice shape. This is especially good for eyeliner. And it's not just a good tip for eye cleaning up eyeliner on a kid. It's really good for, um, for grown-ups as well or just your everyday stuff. So... If you've put it on and you've got that horrible situation where this side is really thick and this one is not, don't worry about it. Or if the shadow has fallen down to here, don't worry about it. This, the tip, the Q-tip in there forms a lovely line. Follow the line you need and erase it. And it gives you a really clean, sharp line. Ta-da! Easy cleanup. You can do it anywhere, really, like if you needed to do that around the lips. Um, because their lipstick's gone all over the place. Put it into a Q-tip, boom, boom, do your outside lip line so that then you don't have to, it's like when you're colouring in a colouring sheet, rather than staying within the lines, which can be really tricky, go nuts, clean the outside, done, easy. It's much easier, it takes a lot of the pressure off you, the mum, the dad, the parent, the teacher, whoever is putting the makeup on the kid. And last, last tip, because I completely forgot about this, putting lipstick on, wait until the very last minute. Um, final thoughts on this though. The most important thing about children performing is that the child performs, that they get on the stage, that they do the dance, okay? Because you want them to have fun, you want them to enjoy the experience, but also from a, just a dance teacher practical point of view, you want the kid on stage performing their best, okay? Because if they don't go on stage, then all of the work that you've done, all right, so if that means they go on without makeup because it's just too big a stress, doesn't matter. Put them on without makeup. Just get the kid on stage, okay? Get him in the costume, on the stage, done. But if you practice makeup and follow these tips, then you're more likely to get a kid on stage with makeup that enhances their feature features and they'll look better and their parents will be able to tell who they are and not go, hmm. Oh, why does my kid look like a ghost? Hmm. Yeah, it happens. Anyway, that's all for today's video. If you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something new, please hit the thumbs up button. Really, really helps me. And you know what? If you don't like it, hit the dislike button because you know what? Analytics just sees them as the same thing anyway. So, eh, you do you. You live your best life. Why am I doing this? Oh, that's right, because I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm delirious. Um, also subscribe to my channel, it would help me out a lot. And click the notification bell and you'll get notifications sent to you on when I upload so you will always be able to keep up to date with Dance Geek. Okay, thanks for watching guys, bye.